I have bees here at the Cooks Co-op and we love to make our own honey. But I wonder how healthy the bee populations are in the city. So I'm off today to see my friend Doug Purdy from Urban Beehive. Hey Doug, how you going? Hey buddy. Welcome to the roof of the Holiday Inn it's in amazing. Hot Point. It's amazing. So cool. Yeah, it's an amazing view. Got a jacket for you, keep the bees off. Beautiful. Let's go and have a look. Thank you. How many hives do you have across Sydney? We've got about 100 beehives on building rooftops. Well, we started um, in 2010. We put one set of hives in and then we've just sort of been moving on to more and more rooftops. How healthy are the bee populations in our cities? Urban areas are great for bees because there's things flowering all year round, you know. So um, in the country you might have things flowering only part of the year, but there's always things flowering in cities and it's also warmer so you don't get the cold winters. Are you harvesting still or do you leave them now? Yeah, look, we're going through and finishing off our harvesting for, for winter, but here in Sydney it's amazing. Sometimes you'll get harvests even in winter, you know, in the coastal areas. Yeah. The bees are producing all year round. Wow, so you constantly having different flavours of honey through the, throughout the whole year. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's really interesting, you know, in urban areas, you've got all these different things flowering, so yeah. that the honeys are very, very different to what you might expect from a country space. Yeah. So why are you bringing hives onto rooftops? The idea started that we wanted to bring bees back into Sydney. Lots of people are growing things in their sort of backyards now, but yeah. there aren't any bees to pollinate it because um, where the bees might have been living in trees, they've been chopped down for development. So that was the idea behind what we do. Now, the big question is, what would happen if we didn't have any bees? Well, we'd be naked and hungry. Our stock needs to eat, and we'd have so little food, we'd be eating the food for our stock. Right. So, or we'd be eating the stock. So Doug, I'd really like to see what's in the hives. Well, let's have a look. The okay. first thing we need to do is put our protective gear on. I'll yeah. just help you with your hood. So here we go. Wow, that is so here's amazing. A, here's look a how frame. full it is. So there's a lot of bees here. Are there different bees for different jobs, or are they all sort of doing the same thing? Well, all of these bees are worker bees, which means they're the female bees. Yeah. The bees themselves have short lives, so a bee lives about 50 days. I have actually used some of the honey from your bees in what I've prepared for us to eat. Sounds good. I'm hungry. No good. So I've made some soup using your beautiful honey. Fantastic. And I just bought a few things to add to it because I can't just have the soup on its own. <laughs> I've just got some ginger. And I just wanted to put a little bit of coriander so give it a bit of a green. And then of course, some of your beautiful honey to give it a bit of added sweetness. That's fantastic soup. If somebody wanted to get into beekeeping, how would they go about it? A bee course is a great way to go. And just to get the experience to know how to manage the beehive and check on diseases and those sorts of things. Yeah. And if I had one hive in, the, in my backyard, for example, how much honey would you expect to get out of that hive a year? Or Well, you'd be amazed. Yeah. So yeah, here in Sydney, um, we get about 100 kilos from one beehive in the season. Wow. So is there a lot of work in maintaining a hive? You know, it's not a lot of work. Mm. Um, much less work than, say, having chickens. Yeah. Um, it's about, oh, you know, an hour or two every sort of three to four weeks during the warm part of the year. Yeah. Um, and then it comes to harvesting the honey, which takes longer. But the thing is, if you, if you want to look after bees who don't want to have a beehive in your backyard, what you could do is grow flowering things. So if you have plants that are flowering, um, that'll look after bees and look after all the other beneficial insects. And, um, and then, yeah, you don't have to have bees. Thanks for having me up here today. It's just been really interesting. What a great office you've got. <laughs>